Hi, it's Kim from Expressions of the Universe with your weekly wisdom for November 7th through the 13th. I have cards for every sign for the week. I have our power goddess of the week, our crystals of the week, the astro for the week. And yeah, so let's get started. I will be pulling cards for every sign from the crystal ally deck because you're never going to believe it. My lovely cat, Missa, picked petrified wood again for the crystal of the week to help us get unstuck. Now, this is the third time in four weeks that she's picked this. So, now she's a Pisces. That's why, I mean, I, I shuffle the cards and I spread them out. And she walks over and puts her paw on one card out of like 60 cards. And she's been consistently picking this. So I asked my pup, my schnoodle, who's a cancer, Bay Marie. I told her to go pick a card because I want to train her because, you know, Miss is almost 18. And Bailey, she just wants to do like this downward dog spread across the deck. But uh, she finally got the hang of it and she picked a card. And it's Demorderite again. So um, both of these cards symbolize concentration, organization, focus, clarity, clearing of the mind, being able to wipe away like that scattered cluttered crazy monkey mind and mispicked artemis as our power goddess of the week and she is about focus and i really love her especially because of the crystals that were picked oh and here are my demorderites that i have um you can see, and they come in various colors. Mostly it's like a dark blue. And I like these. I've been wearing these in my bra for, <laughs> to keep myself on track um, because it's been rough. But anyway, Artemis, you know, she's the huntress, the hunter. I think she was also known as Diana. Um, but her message of focus talks about, yes, keeping your eye on the prize, however, not being so uber focused on something that you see or something that you want, that you're losing sight of everything else around you. And, you know, that desire to have that one thing canceling out the possibility that maybe that one thing isn't right for you. So you're not seeing the other things that are around you that are right or enjoying the experience of attaining that thing. So I'll talk more about all of these, maybe not so much these, a little bit. I'll touch on these a little bit for the clarity and the focus uh, because I've already talked about these a couple times over the last month, but I will be posting these to Facebook and Instagram with a channeled message during the week. Okay, so let me shuffle these, get ready for the cards for every sign. You will want to pay attention to your sun sign, rising sign, moon sign, and any stelliums that you may have. And stelliums are a cluster of planets in a particular sign in your chart. Um, Last night, I posted a new blog about the North Node moving into Taurus and the South Node moving into Scorpio. And I give a list of attributes that we should be aiming for during these next 18 months, starting at the end of December, going until July of 2023. And then a list of attributes that we should be, you know, getting away from. So we will talk more about that, but go check out that blog. It is on expressionsoftheuniverse.com. Um, it's also in Linktree. 
Instagram, Facebook will get you to the links. Um, what else? Daylight saving time has ended. And try telling that to animals. So if you are an owner of some beloved fur babies, they don't know. They don't know that David, they don't know anything about daylight saving time. And so we turn the clocks back. I believe in Europe, they did it last week. And uh, yeah, the one good thing is that Crystal Queer, Michael, will only be two hours difference from me because he's in Arizona. They don't change their clocks. So I may be able to catch some of his shows. Um, oh, and he and his friend Janelle read my toes last week on his Facebook Live. I did post it on Facebook and Instagram. So go check that out. Crystal Queer Live on Facebook and Instagram. But I think uh, they only did the show on Facebook. Um, but yeah, getting back to the animals, you know, my cat came up into the bed. I have little stairs because she, you know, she's so old and my bed's really high. She's so old. So she uses those little stairs and she came up and it was 6.04. But in her world, it was already 7.04, which meant Kimmy is late and she wanted to eat. And the pups were really happy because they wanted to go out. Um, so, yeah. And then I had birds pecking at my window because they know I feed them. And then there's this one squirrel that loves to hang on my kitchen window screen and look in, like asking me, where are my nuts? Where's my nuts? Come on, Kim, where's my nuts? Um, so, yes, I had a very early start today. A nap is in order. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's about it. And yesterday I worked at Solutions for Daily Living in Newtown, doing readings all day. I was booked, booked, booked. And when I came home, I made dinner for the dogs and the cat and myself and I ate. And after I cleaned everything up, I'm like, I think it was 630. And I said, okay, come on, we're going to bed. Kimmy's got to work tomorrow. I was thinking it was Sunday and that it, today was Monday. And then I realized, oh, it's only Saturday. I was so happy. You have no idea. So happy. It's the little things, right? And uh, yeah, sorry this is so late, but I just couldn't get my crew up together today. And I needed a nice hot salt bubble bath before I, I recorded this. All right, so starting with Aries. Aries sun signs, rising signs, moons, etc. You have, I wanted to pull from a little black bag and I can't find it anywhere. And uh, it's kind of freaking me out. I looked everywhere. But anyway, Aries, self-discipline, fluorite would be a good, a good crystal for the Aries, suns, risings, and moons this week. Self-discipline. That's why I'm using these cards. Not only because we have repetitive stones again for the week. Um, but I kind of wanted just something with a single word and then the extra crystal would be great for all of you. Far suns, risings, and moons. You have wind. So winds of change are coming, Taurus. This isn't actually a crystal, so you'll get a bonus card. Inner peace. Tourmaline. I like that. So with the winds of change that are coming, Uranus is in Taurus for the long haul. And the North Node is getting ready to move into Taurus. So go read my blog to see what it's all about. Tourmaline, pink tourmaline especially, will be the crystal to bring you inner peace during the chaos. Gemini's. Oh, it's Larimar with nurture. And isn't that perfect? perfect. See her in that bath? That's what I was doing before I came on here. Oh, little itch in my nose. So, um, yes, nice salt baths, getting, you know, do that spa thing, nurture yourself, self-nurturing. That's going to be a big theme for the next 18 months when the North Node moves into Taurus. 
All right, Cancers, you have Path of Service, and it's Charawite. Charawite, I can never say this. Charawite. Um, hopefully, you all know what I'm saying, or you know how to pronounce this, but I can never say that correctly. Um, anyway, it's this really beautiful purple stone. And uh, yes, path of service means this week you will be serving others um, or at least, you know, keeping them in your thoughts and prayers. It will be the service of others for you. Cancer, suns, risings, and moons. Leo. Oh, I love it. It's rose quartz and it's love, but I think it's more about self-love, Leos. You need to pour that on. Pour that into your heart, Leos. A lot of self-love. A lot of self-love for the fixed signs for the almost next two years. Okay, Virgo. It is initiation and it's Venus site initiation. So something new is beginning for the Virgo suns, risings, and moons. And this is like a divine initiation, a spiritual initiation, some kind of higher connection. Pay attention to your dreams. Libra, and I'm sorry, Libra, I forgot to pull a new moon card for you last week. And Melanie, the Celtic princess, called me out. Thank goodness that she did. Thank you, Melanie. But I'm sorry, I couldn't go back and pull a card for you. So clarity, clear courts. Maybe I needed more clarity. I knew that I missed somebody. I had that feeling that I did. So this is for Libra suns, risings, and moons. Clear courts this week will bring some beautiful clarity to all of your confusion. In addition to the petrified wood and the demortarite will also work for that. All right, Scorpios, you have, oh, it's purification and it's black tourmaline. And that's perfect because the sun is in Scorpio. Mars is in Scorpio. I believe uh, Mercury just moved into Scorpio. So, you know, things could be a little tense right now for the Scorpio suns, risings, and moons. And a lot of black tourmaline will help get you grounded, purify, and clean out your demons, your shadows. Sagittarius. Oh, I love it. So it's manifestation and it's citrine. So that's a really beautiful stone. And Sag, your birthdays are coming up soon. We're, we're coming into Sag time, which is a time to celebrate. I love it. Perfect. Capricorns. It is leadership and it's sunstone. So I think this would be really good for the Capricorns, you know, because we are nearing winter in the Northern Hemisphere, but we're nearing summer in the Southern Hemisphere. So for the Cappies down under, you would be celebrating. Uh, for the Cappies up here, you could be um, deficient in sunlight. So getting out into sunlight using some sunstone will definitely brighten your days. Aquarius. Okay, so Aquarius, protection as well. And it is obsidian. Do you hear my kitty? She's yelling for more food. Always the perpetually hungry cat. I think I already fed her six times today um, in only like nine hours. Anyway, Aquarius, obsidian, protection, grounding, clearing out shadows demons, negative thoughts and feelings, protecting you from that coming to you. And last but not least, Pisces and it's Seraphonite. I love this. We were working with this yesterday at the shop and it is for healing. This was one of my stones during, uh, to use during the new moon, I believe. Um, so yes, check that out. There you go. Healing, healing, healing. All right, what else do I have for you? The astrology for the week. Um, <laughs> the eclipses are coming. The eclipses are coming. The eclipses are coming, as Ann Ortley would say. She's one of my favorite astrologers uh, that I love to watch every week. And she changed her show to like mid-afternoon on Mondays. And I'm usually working. So it's, I hear you. 
I'm working. I'm recording. Um, so it's hit or miss if I get to see her live or not, because I am working, you know, mid-afternoon on Mondays. Anyway, she was saying, the eclipses are coming. The eclipses are coming. So we have a an eclipse next week on the 19th, which is next Friday. And then there's another, uh, there's a full solar eclipse on December 4th. And both of those are hitting me. Ah. And then the eclipse is following that will be hitting me as well. But that's always good news. So let's do the astrology. When I was looking at the astrology for the week, uh, the 10th, Wednesday, the 10th looks really hairy, really, really hairy. Um, very, very tense. There's so many aspects. Today, I would say play some nice, soothing, calm, inspirational music, maybe stay in bed and put on, put on a movie because uh, there's a little bit of tension today. And um, yeah, let me just look at my calendar. So yeah, that's, today is mild, mild irritation, mild irritation, possibly tomorrow on Monday, November 8th. We're making some adjustments um, because we're getting ready. We're letting go of things. We're moving on. Um, what else? We have to be open to new ideas. Spontaneity is the order of the day. And we're free to explore new possibilities this week. On Tuesday, November 9th, let's see, uh, truthful feelings will come out, come to a surface. It's up to us to know how to handle them. The angels will be smiling on us. This is a feel-good time um, on Tuesday, so I do like that. We can relax. We can tune in to the subtle aspects of life and art, nature, beauty, dreams, and spiritual realms with the moon, sextiling, Neptune. Um, that Where there's tension, Mercury is sesquisquaring Neptune. It's overstimulating our imagination. Um, definitely right brain intuitive thinking, a little bit of confusion, misperceptions, some deceit possibly. Uh, that same moon is sesquisquaring the North Node in Gemini. Uh, we're going to have to wait before moving forward. Prepare as much as possible for the rest of the week. I'm going to tell you, Wednesday the 10th, I think it's going to be really hairy. Um, but basically, Tuesday is a very harmonious time. We should be feeling pretty good. So enjoy ourselves on Tuesday. Now, Wednesday... This is the hairy part. So we've got Mercury squaring Saturn. It represents a narrow focus thinking, exclusion, limitations. Um, we could have delays in transportation, like, you know, a lot of traffic or breakdowns going on, um, breakdowns in communication, overly ex uh, exacting judgments, like really people judging you, you judging them. Definitely delays ahead. Um, the moon conjuncting Saturn, it's an auspicious time for any project that we're trying to do. Any kind of endurance or perseverance that we need, that will be good. However, the moon squaring Mars is saying avoid overreacting or lashing out in crazy behavior, especially if you're caught in traffic. Uh, we're not going to be quite ourselves on Wednesday and we may not even realize it. So you really have to exercise a lot of patience on Wednesday. Um, Mercury will be conjuncting Mars. This is where a lot of irritation comes in because Mercury doesn't like to be up against Mars and Mars irritates him. Um, they're not the best of friends but it brings decisiveness, mental assertiveness, honesty, practical solutions, um, fast work, rapid progress. So we'll be getting our work done. So I, I, that could be a good thing. Um, Mars transiting, uh, semi-squaring Neptune has us really feeling out of sorts. Neptune, it's bringing like this fog to us, but don't worry. 
um, any kind of crazy feelings, they'll soon fade away. That's a, this is a great day to listen to some good, upbeat, inspirational music, maybe to get you out of that funk. And then finally, um, the moon will also be making an aspect to the south node. And so it's actually a good time because it gives us this feel good, uh, this good feeling. And it's like we're getting ready for new opportunities. We can feel it coming. Thursday, um, the moon will be sextiling Eris. So you can expect people wanting their voices to be heard and maybe not in the most pleasant way. It's funny because this morning, and I have written down, Eris was in the sixth house. Eris is in Aries. And the sixth house represents animals. And it was like, yes, my animals wanted to be heard at six o'clock this morning. And it makes sense because that's how the chart aligned up. Uh, astrology is often very literal. Okay, so also on Thursday, um, our love flights could be a little unsettled, relationships unsettled. Try to relax and not obsess. Show restraint. Show restraint. Be patient. You'll reap the rewards. Um, Mercury quincunx. Now this could be a little toffee on Thursday. Mercury quincunx Chiron. Be kind to yourself and others as you discover the truth is sometimes painful, but ultimately very healing. And also the moon squaring the sun will help us feel out of sorts as well. Try to relax, avoid conflicts, and, you know, this feeling will pass, it, you know, within a few hours. So that comes in around quarter of eight. Um, 7.46 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, the 11th. Oh, I just realized I'm off from work because I work in a financial institution and it's a bank holiday. Woohoo! All right. So, oh, that just made me all excited. Um, and I'm not, I am only doing things for myself. I'm taking care of that Laramar nurturing card. Okay. So, Friday the 12th, what do we have? Um, mm, I guess, you know, Mars will be making an aspect to Eris. So really kind of all week, people are going to want to be heard. That's what I'm, I'm feeling. That's what I'm seeing. Um, the 12th could feel a little affectionate. It's Friday and I'm in love. Love and romance is in the air. Smile, laugh, and enjoy. So I love that. And the sun's trining Neptune. Follow your intuition, your imagination, your dreams, your creativity. Everything is limitless. Um, record your dreams and ideas on Friday because, you know, intu intuition is, ex is extremely heightened. Um, Okay, so the moon will be squaring the north node in Gemini, and it's a trigger for out with the old and in with the new. We are preparing for that big shift. Don't be surprised if we don't hear something this week about something that will get a rise out of us. And then uh, the moon will move into Pisces also. Um on Friday the 12th, that's when the intuition and the dreams really start to come in. Anything else? Saturday the 13th, uh, patience will be a virtue once again. Otherwise, we could succumb to feelings of frustration and sadness. All good things come to those who wait. Um, also, you know, the moon will be transiting Neptune. So that's the angels going, oh. Uh, pay attention to your dreams. Uh, Mercury will be opposing Uranus. That's going to be a little tight. Mental tension, fixation on one point of view only, rigidity, stubbornness, rigidity of the mind, radical views are challenged, interrupted communication. So I think that's going to be a precursor to what next week could be bringing as well. Um, and then the moon trining Mercury ideas will flow freely. You express 
We'll be expressing ourselves all week long. So, oh, with that being said, I, I just, after, after seeing that, I think I need a nap. Um, anyway, that's all I have for you for the week. I will be preparing something for the upcoming eclipse uh, that's happening on November 19th here Eastern Standard Time. Um, I've got to check the time and see what it'll be in your neighborhood. Let's see, I have it up on my calendar. Lunar partial eclipse, um, because there's a full moon in, my God, how can I not read this? The uh, It's a full moon in Taurus at 27 degrees, 14 minutes. So it'll only be in Taurus for a couple of hours and then it moves into Gemini. So, you know, I'm a Gemini sun, Taurus rising. And that's always good because it's like the blinders come off. Um, lunar eclipses do kind of unnerve me because I've, I've had some events happen, but usually during a full lunar eclipse, this is only a partial, it will be able to be seen in most of North America. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look at that chart next week. I'll pull cards for all signs, but we'll look at the chart and see where is that going to land. Just know that it's like Taurus and Gemini. So it would be also Scorpio Sagittarius. So those are the areas that you're going to look at. It's really going to affect all of us. Anyway, I hope you have a great week. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Uh, somewhere down at the bottom is a subscribe and check out my other videos if they happen to pop up here or not. And I'll see you next week. Oh, oh, Tarot Tuesday Live. Um, I'm really going to try to make the Tarot Tuesday Live this week, but then I think the next two weeks I won't because my, my class schedules are crazy and American Thanksgiving is coming. I'll talk more about it next Tarot Tuesday Live. So I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.